<laughs> I was gonna hang him. Oh dear, we always do these wacky starts anyway. You're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just hang out. So what I wanted to talk about today is a very simple concept. Closest weapon, nearest target. What I showed you had nothing to do with that. It was just a bit wild, wasn't it? We're just warming up. Yeah, yeah. we're just warming up. We're just getting into it. It's first thing in the morning here, so we're just like... All right, so really simple concept of fighting efficiently and dynamically, which is necessary when learning how to defend yourself. Although I was trying to get a piggyback on you. You uh, <laughs> jumped on me a lot. <laughs> that was really weird. That was. But nearest weapon, closest target nearest weapon is a very simple concept. Wherever my hands are, basically, and my legs are, relate to where the targets are. So if my hands are up here, then obviously the target and the targets, if you think about it, would be the head. What would you target on the head? Well, obviously you've got the nose, you've got the jaw, you've got the cheekbone. Uh, that's enough for now, basically. You've got the throat, the neck, okay? You've got the sternum, you have solar plexus. You've obviously got the ribs, but you've got the pubic bone. I never really bother about punching some of the abdominals because most people are fairly uh, resilient to that. They can take punches to the abdominals. Unless, obviously, you time it, okay, in the pubic bone. Now, you're probably, again, these are targets we're talking about. Uh, knees, okay, foot. So you can stamp on people's feet. We've done a video on stamping on people's feet. Okay, foot stomps. So you've got the webbing of the foot. So you've got the physical webbing of the foot. So you can use your heel to stamp on the foot. And then you can hit onto the top of the foot. You can scrape on the shin. These are all some little ideas that you've got. I've already mentioned the knees, but you've got obviously kicks to the knees, and you've got knees to the inside of the thighs and to the outside of the thighs. So knees, kicks to the knees, okay, and thighs. Groin's an obvious one. Uh, with the groin, you're obviously going to use your knee. That makes sense. You could hit with your hands, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So the concept of nearest weapon, well, those are the nearest target, targets to weapons, if you like. Those are targets potentially, okay? Those are the areas potentially that I can go for. What I need to do is I then need to consider what weapons they go, what weapons match. So the logic is very simple. Nearest weapon to the nearest target. So obviously my hands would go to the head, okay? To the head, but they wouldn't go, watch this, let's go down, to the feet, right? Because this is a far drop from here so here, I wouldn't punch. <laughs> that wouldn't make any sense at all. I wouldn't punch his foot. So for that thinking, the logic is very, very simple. You wouldn't kick his head. Okay, I wouldn't, I, and I'm gonna try in this sort of area here, or get my knee up to his head. Now, I'm not saying it's not a valuable weapon. It does actually work quite well if you take your knee and knee someone in the head. But the logic is quite simple. I might hit him, bring his head down, and then knee him in the head, to keep ragging him down, okay, pulling him around, and then knee him in the head, knee him in the head, knee him in the head. That, in this case, stay where you are, yep. is I'm taking the target, the target is his head, to the weapon. So in that case, it's the nearest weapon, Okay, which is my knee, bang, to the nearest target, bang. Now, it's obviously interchangeable, it could be his leg as well, but the point is, the weapons that are closest to the target are what you actually want to try to uh, engage when you're moving. So a simple way of looking at it, as I've said before, is that wherever my hands are, so throw a punch, whatever it is, doesn't matter, one, I get my hands up, okay? When I'm in this situation, he throws another punch, Boom, and I'm in this situation where I'm firing up, I'm trying to stick to his arms and I'm trying to get inside. You know how I'm turning my head and dropping my chin and I'm bending my knees. I've spoken about this defensive posture many a times before. You try to get inside the joint system and once you get inside the joint system, you're looking to try to wrap and control the arms. If you can do that, obviously failing for him using his head, using his legs or trying to draw a weapon, you've got much more control over his body. Now here's where the technique or the concepts start to come into effect. The concepts of nearest weapon. Well, what would we say would be the nearest weapon? I could use my head. We did a video on head butting. Bang, that would be possible. Elbow to head, that's also a close weapon to a close target here. Bang, okay, I could follow up, bang. I can knee, bang. I could foot stamp, bang. I could off balance him and punch him in the groin, and punch him in the body because from here, my hand's in this side. 
The point of what I'm trying to show you is more the efficiency and the directness of the movement. The efficiency and the direct directness of the movement is based on the fact that I'm trying to move in a direct way, and in a direct way, bang, meaning I'm not wasting time and effort. Now, why is that important? Well, frankly, when you get to our age, because we're not spring chickens, actually, we're the same age. <laughs> oh, my. We are by, by coincidence, how long have you been with me, Nick? Uh, 10 years or more now. Yeah, yeah, quite a long time. You've been with me for over 10 years. That's a long, long time. 18 years. 18 years. I did think it could have been 10 years. <laughs> yeah. It's been 18 years. 18 years is a long time to be training, right? So in 18 years, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's a bit weird, but personal disclosure. The point is, when you've been training for a long time, what you need to be able to do is to move as efficiently, as directly as possible. And the reason why you want to do that is to conserve energy. That's how I got onto it, because I was talking about age. And one of the things I was saying is that when you get to a certain age, one thing you don't want to be able no. to do is, is just to go wailing at it. So to move efficiently means to select targets that are basically going to be close to your weapons. And we all know what your weapons are. We've discussed that before. Fists, elbows, knees, potentially your head if you're that way inclined. I don't potentially like to headbutt, to be honest with you, but you know some people do. Uh, whatever your weapons are, your body weapons are, then that is generally how okay, you're going to sort of uh, target. So closest weapons, nearest target, hopefully you've picked up a couple of points. Valid theory, does work, it doesn't matter what martial art you do, it doesn't matter what fighting system you do, even if you do MMA, it really makes no difference whatsoever because it doesn't rely on athleticism, what it relies on is just good practical ability. Thanks for watching.